Um, our next commentator is uh, Heather Dewey Hagborg. She was already mentioned in Sigurdur's welcome address uh, Wednesday. Uh, the il illustrations we have used for this webinar online and also on the slides is taken from her artwork, Stranger Visions. As uh, Sigurdur mentioned, um, Juve Hogbird was invited by the Norwegian Biotechnology Board uh, to Norway in 2013 and she held talks in both the cities of Bergen and Oslo. Uh, there she talked about um, imaginaries for a possible future. Uh, these open meetings uh, got a lot of uh, media attention and stirred debates about surveillance and genetic integrity and the like. Now, seven years later, these methods, as we have heard, have been used in, let's say, real life. Heather, so we look forward to hear your comments today. Thank you so much and thank you really for inviting me to participate in the webinar and uh, to hear all of these talks. It's always very interesting as an artist to hear how these things uh, percolate and unfold in real world practices like policing. So I'm Heather Dewey Hackborg. I'm an artist who works with biotechnology as a medium for looking at the social and ethical impacts of exactly these practices. Uh, my work is lab-based, so I work with the materiality of biology, and I tend to consider myself a biohacker. So the work that I do often involves what's called an exploit. So in kind of the computer programming uh, area that's uh, using art as a way to show a kind of vulnerability in structures or current systems. I'm from New York, so a lot of my experience is US-based, but I've also spent quite a bit of time living in Europe I'm in Germany currently, uh, and in the Middle East. So I've worked on several art projects that touch on the topics of discussion in this conference, in particular the work Stranger Visions, which was already mentioned and is in the uh, promotional materials for the conference. So in that work, I collected forensic artifacts that strangers left in public, like uh, chewed up gum, cigarettes, butts, discarded hairs from the streets of New York City. I brought those things to the world's first community biology lab called GenSpace in downtown Brooklyn, worked with scientists there to extract DNA, to analyze it, and then used that to generate these photorealistic algorithmic portraits representing what that stranger might look like based on their DNA, anticipating this practice of DNA phenotyping, drawing on some of the early research in that field. These were 3D printed in full color and exhibited, as you see in the pictures, uh, on a wall so that you could walk up and kind of imagine yourself to be one of those faces. More recently, I made a film that's a kind of uh, sci-fi bio-art film, you could think of it, uh, called T3511 that premiered in Eindhoven in the Netherlands at the new art space. It's a story about a biohacker that obtains uh, saliva from an anonymous donor online, profiles their DNA, and proceeds to fall in love with them, become obsessed with them through this data, ultimately using genetic genealogy to track them down. And the film premiered just a few months before the Golden State Killer case in, the, in California made genetic genealogy a household term in the United States. So I share a bit of the background so you can understand why uh, an artist might have anything to say really about DNA and policing. So one of the scenes of T3511, my film, is shot in the Danish National Biobank in Copenhagen, a giant robotic freezer where I found myself surrounded by blood samples from every baby born in Denmark since 1982. And each sample has a unique ID, which connects it to the individual that the blood came from, to their data, potentially to their medical records as well. Björgen Sigurosen, and I apologize for butchering anyone's names, uh, spoke with great critical reflection on the potential of a growth in DNA police technologies in Iceland and the decode genetics database of Icelandic DNA. And I think his talk captured really beautifully the feeling that I had standing in this biobank freezer that there was so much information surrounding me and this could be used for so many things that there was a population that had invested such tremendous trust into the government and what an incredible responsibility that really is. 
a brief note on phenotyping, and I'd love to get into that in much more depth. Um, I think we should really talk about what ancestry means and how it's used in the context of policing in particular. Uh, but I just want to point to Thomas Berg's discussion of, of eye color and use that as an index for thinking more generally about complex traits. So eye color is really one of the simplest things to predict, and yet, as Berg notes, it's only correctly predicted in about 63% of the time in the limited Northern European population. And he says that what is challenging is predicting people who have something in between blue and brown eyes, an admittedly common occurrence. So when it comes to ancestry, we're all mixtures, we're all migrants, and the concept of purity is deeply problematic. So I encourage you in thinking about whether to utilize DNA phenotyping to look at the results themselves and think of the accuracy issues around eye color alone, which is very intuitive to grasp, as representative of issues with the technology more generally. And one final point to consider. Recently, we've seen the backlash against big tech as people become more and more aware of how their data is actually used by companies like Facebook and Google. The critical regulatory approach that is finally emerging around data, and more recently AI, gives us a glimpse of how we should consider approaching DNA technologies which are still in their infancy. Rather than storming ahead and using whatever technology is at our disposal to fight crime, we should think carefully about the consequences of databasing and biobanking and the invasiveness of DNA, this most personal of data for future generations. We have an opportunity not to make the same mistakes that were made with purely digital technologies with biotechnologies. And so I urge you to consider the possibility that what we need is more regulation and less emergent technology in the field of policing that is so incredibly vital and where people are so incredibly vulnerable. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Heather, uh, for your comments.